Hey, welcome to You Build Terrain. We're dedicated to helping you uh, learn how to build practical things uh, for your terrain, for your miniature gaming, uh, like Warhammer 40K, Warhammer uh, The Old World, uh, Bolt Action, and games like that, uh, just to kind of help you use practical items, practical applications, and terrain building techniques that I've built over the last multiple years of being involved in the hobby. And uh, today we're on part three of uh, painting these uh, two objective markers um, that, that we're going to, you know, be painting up, you know, and doing base coats on today. Um, I just kind of wanted to show them a little bit closer. But these are just, um, I'm going to use them as uh, brood eggs. Somebody's requested brood eggs. And so I'm making these two pieces. You know, side by side, it just looks like eggs on a little piece of terrain. And so in this uh, video, I'll definitely be painting all the base coats on this. And then in the final video, I'll be doing the highlights and details as well as a little bit of flocking to finish these pieces off. So let's get, you know, going. We'll roll up our sleeves and start painting this terrain. And as always, Help us out by liking these videos, subscribing to the channel, sharing these videos with your friends that are in the hobby too. And all of those things help us. You know, leave comments. I'm always interested to hear what you're working on, uh, you know, what your thoughts are on the project. Um, you know, I just, I, we're trying to build subscribers as we go along and trying to get, you know, help our videos reach more and more people. And you can help us out with that. And I really appreciate if you would like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you out there. All right, in today's video, we're gonna be painting these two objective markers, uh, small terrain pieces that I'm, I'm calling alien eggs or brood eggs. And <clears throat> we're going to start painting on them today. Uh, the paint that we're gonna use is going to be Oops Paint from a local hardware store. Um, I just picked up these paints. Um, they were, somebody's brought it back because they didn't like it or whatever. And what it is, is I've got three different colors. This is the base coat, which is kind of a dark chocolate brown. This is the medium, which is kind of like a desert yellow or uh, an off yellow uh, ochre, you know, that kind of thing. And then the last, of course, not this brown spot, but this off white is the highlight that I would do. And um, what it is, is I'm gonna brush on the first color, and then I'm going to probably dry brush the other two colors on there. And of course, the other things that I have is a cup of water, you know, clean, cool water. I'm using my ceramic tile, which is gloss coated. It's a great place as a palette, just to do terrain on a quick basis. When I'm painting miniatures, I typically use a um, a wet palette, but when I'm doing terrain, sometimes it's easier just to do the ceramic tile because you're moving from color to color pretty quickly. The two brushes I'll be using is this uh, half inch flat brush. I'm gonna be using this brush to paint on some details and actually do the eggs. And then of course I have this really rotten looking brush that I've used forever, probably, I don't know, since the 90s as my dry brush from uh, Games Workshop. Anyway, um, we'll get started with this. And um, what I'm gonna do first is just open up this paint. And I have one of my big popsicle sticks because if I need to stir or get any paint goop out, having a popsicle stick is a good way to do that. I'm just gonna stir this just a little bit. Looks pretty good. Um, it's a little thick but I'm not super worried about that. I'm just gonna set that to the side. And I'm gonna put out a little bit of this paint. And I really screwed up there. I pushed the brush too far in. It's really not a good idea to get paint. Um, I'll show you this. Is This is the, the bezel, this metal piece here. It's really not a good idea to get paint all the way to the bezel. Because if you do, it can cause problems with the brush later. 
Um, it'll get stiff down in there past the bezel because it's harder to wash that out. Um, I'm just gonna rinse my brush really well here. And I'll be sure to wash it really well. And when you're washing brushes, it's pretty simple. You're just going to use um, like lukewarm water and soap. And just a simple soap. Um, I don't use anything complicated. They do make brush soaps that you can buy. Uh, I have used them in the past when I had really, really good brushes uh, for painting miniatures. I have used uh, those brush soaps because they're a little milder and it, it'll help keep the natural oils in the brush itself. Uh, but for most of the stuff I use with terrain, I just use a regular dish soap and some lukewarm water and rinse them really well at the end. So I'm gonna add water to this because it is a little thick. I'm gonna mix that up. And um, I'm just gonna do this one little piece at a time. It's just a little bit more water. So that looks good. And I'm gonna start working this dark color in. And uh, this will just look like earth, you know, like regular earth or terrain, like in a woodland setting or a jungle setting. If I was really trying to push jungle, I wouldn't use that middle yellow, that desert yellow. I would actually use a green, um, you know, a little bit more toward uh, a green ochre of some sort. Um, anyway, uh, I'm not gonna try to get this up on the eggs. If a little bit does, it won't matter. Um, but I'm going to try to keep it off of the eggs as best I can or the pecans. If you haven't watched the other videos, definitely take a moment and go and look where this project originated. Uh, I really, I took pecans and cut them in half. Um, and you could do that with any hard shell nut to, you know, work in this kind of egg look. Um, I'm sure there's some plastic pieces that you could use out there. But these, these nuts are fine, especially when you, um, you know, coat them with uh, glue and, and spackle and some of the things I did. It'll keep them, uh, you know, in good shape for a very long time. I've done this before and pieces have survived, you know, multiple years. And I think I have a set somewhere that I was looking at the other day when I first started this project. And I wanna say that I painted those in like 2005 and they're in really good shape still. So any hard shell uh, lagoon or nut will work and you just, I cut them in half and I pull out all the meat or the nut itself. I don't want any of that in there so it won't rot or anything like that in the future. And then I seal it um, with PVA glue all the way around and that, that tends to do well. This will take probably about 20 minutes to dry and I might have to do a second coat. You can kind of see it's, I can see some of that light color coming through. So we'll see what happens there. But that's the first one. And uh, this is the second. If you're trying to dry paint um, and you're inside the house or inside a garage or a basement, you know, your studio, whatever. Oh gosh, look at that. Um, it's a good idea to have a fan so that you can dry things in between stages. Uh, but do remember that the best way to dry your product, you know, especially paint in between stages, is time and sunshine. Um, but, you know, we don't always have the luxury of having enough sunshine, depending on the season or the time of day that you're working. Uh, you might not have enough sunshine to do it, but about 20 minutes in the sun with a good breeze, um, will help dry paint really fast. Um, if I do it just here in the studio, I'm just gonna turn on, the, I have a fan for drying, just cause I do so many projects. And um, you know, it's just a little fan that sits on the desktop. And I have an overhead ceiling fan also. Um, both of those things in combination, I can probably dry it in that same amount of time, like say 20, 25 minutes. Um, but I, like I said, the best is sunshine for sure.
Now, if you really like this project as I'm painting through it, um, do leave a comment to tell me that you do like it. And uh, especially if you wanna see other projects like this where I do some kind of objective marker or just, you know, something small for the, the tabletop sometimes will make a big difference, make your terrain look epic, <laughs> you know, and really get it to start looking a certain way on your table. Now, in another series that I'm currently working on for this for the channel, I'm gonna add this piece to like a large refinery set. So there's probably gonna be about five to six more pieces of terrain that I've been working on that has like pipes and buildings and plates and things like that all over it. So it looks like a refinery or a mine works of some sort. Um, or like a fuel station and um, that's for 40k to go along with this table uh, because this person is looking for like i said terrain that will match up with their 40k play style so i need some things that are going to uh, break the mold you know give cover some large pieces some small pieces some medium pieces just to kind of establish a good piece. All right, so there you go. That's the base coat, and we'll be right back when this dries, and we'll do the next part. Okay, I'm gonna do a second coat on this brown, just because it is a little bit thin. probably because I added so much water, but I did need to add water to get it fluid enough to really go on. All right, second coat done. Okay, now on with a little dry brushing. Um, I like to put a little bit of paint out, not a ton. I am using that desert yellow out of the Oops pot. And always, you know, dab some paint on in a swirl and then dab some paint off with a swirl on paper towel to do excellent dry brushing. I'm just gonna work into this and I'm doing swirls as much as I can, you know, even in between these because that's what pops out all the terrain uh, roughness and kind of gives us the look we're going for. You don't have to do this very heavy, but enough to kind of get that dry brush effect that you're looking for like that. Here, I'm gonna turn on this extra light that's helpful to kind of see what it picked up. This is the one that's not done and this is the one in the right that is done. All right, let me do this next one. 
For the dry brushing, as you can see, I don't really have to go back into my paint. Um, there's a lot of paint still on this brush. So I'm gonna work into it. And I'm not having to be very rough with this. Um, and if you've used all the techniques that I've shown you about using PVA glue and spackle and sand, you're not really gonna beat this up just by painting it. And it's pretty, you know, durable. It's not like, you can see that's, that's really tough. Now, I mean, if I really go at it, of course, I would break through, but you know, general light work won't do anything to it. All right, so there we go, that's the second one. I'll put those side by side so you can see them. And uh, we're gonna move on to the next color, which is our light bone. So this is my off-white. I'm just going to shake it up just a little bit. Once again, this was from a different hardware store, but it came off the Oops paint aisle. And I was just looking for something that would be like off-white or bleach bone um, for terrain, just like this. And here I'll show you what that looks like. It's just a general off-white. Put a little bit on this brush. Swirl it around on my tile until I feel like I've kind of saturated the, the brush with it. And then I'm going to flip this over this paper towel. Just kind of still getting a little bit of the yellow feel to it. So I'm going to do this one more time. Kind of build up the off white instead of the yellow. Yeah, that's a lot better, I can tell. All right, so you'll be able to see this pretty fast. The off-white right on top of the yellow. This is even lighter than what I did with the yellow. Like I'm barely pushing any pressure down. Once again, this is what it looks like side by side. This one doesn't have the bleach bone, this one does. All right, and then uh, I'm just gonna work into this one. The dry brush on the bleach bone, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is picking out these eggs. All right, there we go. Side by side comparison. You can really see where the yellow is, the white is, and the dark brown, and I think that looks great. Once we put static grass and, or some other flocking and we paint these eggs, that's going to look beautiful. All right, so. I'm going to set this dry brush to the side and I'll get out the other paint. Okay, so let's talk about the greens that I'm going to use right quick. Let me put these in order. So I'm going to go with this dark, this is like a Luftwaffe green from uh, Army Painter, but you know it's Vallejo. This one is more like a jade green from the Vallejo line. And then this one is... Uh, Fluo green, Fujo green, Fluo green. It's just a really bright green. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gradually go from this to that to that. And I want this to just really be on the tip and the edging, and these two to be the main colors. I also have this green wash from Secret Weapon. I'm gonna use this wash over the whole thing and then touch back up with this highest highlight, or maybe this highest highlight with a bleach bone. We'll see how it looks when we get there and you'll kind of see what we're doing. And I'm just using, you know, a three with uh, the brush. It's pretty long, uh, but that's what I wanted to do these with. And of course, I'm just using my palette again, my ceramic tile that's gloss. Put a little green out, a little bit of water so that we get the right consistency. We really want it to be fluid. Oh, that's about right. You'll know it's right when you can kind of do like this and you get really good squiggly line. Can you see that? If you get a really good squiggly line when you're brushing, that means it's really fluid. 
and you can do what you want to do. I'm just going to rinse my brush out really good because I've mixed a lot of water and paint. That works good. I'm just going to start with this one and this base color of green. I'm going to go right down to the brown on this. On some of them, you can kind of see the, the puddle of glue right around it. I might paint that also in this dark green. And the edging, of course, is important right from the get-go. You can kind of see here where this is kind of the glue mixture that I put over top. So I'm gonna paint that green also. You can see just a little puddle of it all the way around. And I think that this green over this white is actually gonna give it a pretty good look. If I had painted these black, I would be fighting against the black really hard. And um, I just think white was a better choice for the green I wanted to do. I think I would also choose white or um, pink if I was gonna do red. Uh, pink sometimes or purple is a really good undercoat starting place for red. And I've done that pretty successfully multiple times um, on, off a white base. If I'm doing a red over a black, as you've seen in some of my other videos, I tend to just use um, a really dark red and just start from there and work my way up. As you remember from earlier in this video series, I did PVA glue wash over top of these uh, nuts before I put the primer on them. That will help with your dur durability of this piece for a very long time. But most nuts, you know, hard shell nuts, lagoons, you know, these are pecans, but you could use, um, you know, walnuts, acorns, you know, anything that had a rigid shell, you could use pretty easily. And if you coat it, like I said, with PVA glue, and just be pretty careful with how you're working it, it'll actually turn out really good. The durability will be pretty crazy with that over time. This uh, bubble that popped over here has actually turned out to be a nice addition. We're gonna work that right into the drain. Looks like something bubbled out of this egg. I don't know if you can hear the dog in the background, but my dog's link is going crazy. Probably just a squirrel. All right, there we go. I might end up having to do two layers of this base coat just because I can kind of see some of this white coming through. Uh, I think having a second layer of coating would be good. 
All right, let's get to this next one. And you notice that I'm doing the edging at the bottom first, and I'm using my pinky to kind of hold position on the piece. That helps me keep the brush really steady and even as I brush. You can tell on this one too that the kind of glue layer seeped a little bit here. And I'm just gonna go with that in the piece of terrain. There's another little bubble pop over here, which is good. It means that each one has a little character piece like that or feature like that. Of course, if you had a Gene Stiller cult army, uh, like the person I'm painting this for, his army, of course, uses some of these same greens and different, you know, pods of color. And, um, but you could match these colors, like I said, to be yellow, red, purple, whatever your Gene Stiller cult or Tyranid army uh, was, you could definitely just pop in here and do the same kind of technique. And um, paint your brood eggs or objective markers or, you know, a small terrain piece to actually match your army. Right. This one was really fortunate with that kind of drip to the paint, you know, here and there. That actually looks pretty good. All right, let me um, let this dry, and I'm probably going to do one more coat of this green before we move on to the next color. All right, so I did go back and do one more coat of this um, color on the piece the darker color, just to kind of even it up a little bit. And what I'm gonna do now, just so you can kind of see this, huh? so everything goes everywhere, is I'm gonna mix just a little bit of this dark color with my mid-tone. And uh, I'm gonna see how that looks before I move forward. I want just a little bit more of the mid-tone than the dark but I do want to mix them together and I'm going to use the other end of the brush. not going to get all the way down to the bottom when I do this kind of broken line all the way around. Some of it's going to go right down to the bottom but some of it's going to be staggered. I think that's going to be a better look for me and um, I've done this once before and it turned out pretty good.
And then what I'm gonna do is catch some of this. Ring right at the bottom with the lighter color. These colors are nasty. It's gonna look so gross. Which I guess is perfect for uh, what I'm doing. All right, there you go. This is stage one. This is stage two. It looks like I just need to add just a little bit more on this one. Kind of get that solid color that I'm looking for. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and I'll do this other one.
There's two down. And because these are drying pretty fast, I'm gonna go right back in. You know, there's the two of them together, but this is the first one I did. I'm gonna go right back into it. And what I'm gonna do is take that middle color and mix it slightly with this bright color. Just a bit more. All right, and on this color, I'm not even gonna go down as far as I did with that metal color. Still using that same feather kind of technique. And what I want to do is make sure it's kind of solid up here at the top as best I can. And because this is a little bit lighter color, it might need two coats on that top piece. That's exactly the kind of color combination I was looking for. Okay, so step two to step three, here we go. I'll blend this just a little bit better over here. Yeah. So side by side comparison of what they would look like. I'll go right back into this one.
All right, there they are, side by side. With uh, base coat, you know, mid-tone, and then highlight. And then, like I said, I'm gonna do this wash when that dries. And then I'll probably do two slight uh, dry brushes on top of that. One being bleach bone-ish or an off-white, and one being um, this bright green. Bright green first and then off-white. All right, back in a minute. Okay, so I put just a little bit of this green wash out here. I'm not thinning this at all. I'm gonna go back into the first piece and I'm just gonna lightly brush this over the whole surface of everything that we've painted. I just stuck it in the paint instead of the wash. This wash um, is going to run just a little bit, I can tell, but I don't think that's an awful thing. I'm trying not to tilt it too, too much as I'm painting with the wash just because I don't want it to go everywhere, but it's gonna run in between and stuff like that a little bit. All right, there's the first one. I don't know if you can see much difference on the camera, but it will mellow out uh, what we did in the first couple of layers. Let that dry and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, real quickly here, we're gonna do two quick dry brushes. One is gonna be this really bright green. I'm gonna use that first, as you can see. Let's see if this has enough on it. I think it will. I'm not gonna try to get all the way down at the bottom, but I definitely want these tops. All right. Just a little dry brush, a little tippy top. I'm gonna dry this off the best I can because now I'm gonna take it off white. This is just ivory from Vallejo. <clears throat> okay, you can see I'm just putting out a tiny bit of this Vallejo ivory. Do not want a lot of this, and I'm not going to use a lot of pressure. It's almost too much. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and treat each of them that way, but I'm going to go back with the green one more time because the white is just overpowering and I really want them to be green. Yeah. I was looking a 
little bit better. I'm gonna treat them one more time with the green. And um, that looks better, I like that. I went around the horn just a little bit too much with the white, but things are fixable with paint. Yeah, that looks good. So that's what it's looking like now. pretty good all right so that is it for this section you know part three of this uh, video in the next one what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from this to a finished product we're gonna do flocking the matte varnish you know static grass a little bit of bush kind of things around them and then um, I'm gonna do static grass and those things on it once we get that done, I'm gonna matte varnish the whole thing, and then I'm gonna come back and gloss varnish all the eggs. It'll look really good at the end, and I think you'll love it. We'll talk to you then.